Hello everyone, this is another episode of the Fundcast. Greetings from Zurich to New York. <laughs> Hi, greetings from New York. Hi, Jan. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, thanks for, for participating. And uh, Robert, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Robert Crenshaw. I work with Doctors Without Borders or Medicine Sans Frontier. And my role here is a digital marketing manager. All right. So, and, and as a digital marketing manager, what exactly do you do the whole day? <laughs> That's a great question, Jan. I manage our organizations, MSF USA, I should say. I manage our digital advertising, uh, specifically as it relates to banner, okay. video, social media, right. uh, page search, uh, SEO, and mobile. Okay. Um, I also participate uh, or, or help out in, in, in web analytics um, for DrRobBorders.org here in the U.S., uh, and I also assist in our email marketing uh, program. Uh, I'm part of the marketing team. Okay. Uh, the marketing team spans both traditional, uh, or I should say offline media, as well as digital media. Mm -hmm. uh, with regards to digital media, there's two other colleagues that I work with here. Okay. Um, and they manage or assist with the email marketing program. They also manage some of our back end. Uh, work with relation to landing pages okay. and uh, coding and programming. Um, and I also have another colleague, as I mentioned, who helps out with e e e uh, with project management on both the digital and the traditional side. Okay, and, and from the, the whole list, what do you think or what do you know um, are the best tools for MSF USA? The best tools as far as donation revenue to date have been uh, pay search or search engine marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, so Google, Bing uh, have been uh, great channels of revenue, okay. um, especially towards the end of the year or what they call the holiday gift giving season mm -hmm. um, in the realm of fundraising. Okay. Um, it's been the best for two reasons. One, um, cost efficiency. So mm -hmm. it's low cost. Uh, it's cost per click. Uh, by and large, Google, of the two search engines, Google um, is the strongest as far as impressions, traffic, clicks, and subsequent donation funds. Okay. Um, I think it's also been successful for us due, to, due in part to the news coverage that we've been getting in the past couple of years um, here in the States. Uh, so we have a robust public relations team uh, who uh, disseminates press releases, um, who's also... Um, approached quite often for interviews, mm -hmm. uh, which lead to stories that are published on major uh, news wires and platforms here in the U.S., which we think leads to a lot of searches, namely for Docs Without Borders, doc, excuse me, Docs Without Borders proper, just our organization mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. um, and in turn, we have paid search text ads uh, that we optimize frequently. We test, uh, we test monthly asks, we test one-time asks. Uh, we also create site links driving to content, and we also leverage site links to promote um, initiatives within the organization. So there could be initiatives ranging from an advocacy where we're looking to drive signups, yeah. or an initiative behind a particular cause. Last year we did something around uh, women's health, and we created a microsite, and we also created custom landing pages where yeah. we leveraged our paid search account to drive traffic to those destinations. Wow, great. And you also mentioned banners. Um, d does banners still work? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> I was just reading an article today on my way into the office okay. uh, where there was an interviewee who claims that banners does not work. <laughs> um, and I think it depends on what your organization's goals and initiatives are. Mm -hmm. um, I think for us here in the U.S., banners um, have been beneficial okay. um, in driving traffic down the funnel. Mm -hmm. um, they, I will say that we do have challenges in seeing positive ROI from a last click perspective. However, in working with our agency, we have a multi-attribution channel in place mm -hmm. where we can see users who come or who get exposure to our banner ads, we can follow their path to conversion. Um, and we're able to see on the back end revenue 
that is introduced or influenced by banner ads, okay. in many cases, either coming through our paid search channels or coming to our site direct to, to make conversions. Okay, and in, in general, how important is uh, online fundraising, digital fundraising for MSF USA? Is it uh, still a small amount of money that uh, comes in or, or is it already a, 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 an important uh, um, amount of money? I would say it's a very important channel uh, okay. for MSF USA today and, go, and also going forward. And I think um, 10 years or even five years from now, it'll be even more critical uh, to have a digital presence for this organization. And I think that um, I, I think that applies to not only us, but other international humanitarian relief mm -hmm. organizations, again, here in this country. Um, mail uh, or direct mail still brings in the lion's share of donation revenue for this organization. However, we are seeing decreases, mm -hmm. not only in retention, but also in acquisition in the mail year over year. But we're seeing a steady incline or increase in digital revenue that's coming in. It'll be very critical for us, an organization within a sector that appeals to an older, more fluent audience mm -hmm. who uh, is kind of going through a transition in what they call the graying of America. They're, they're senior citizens, mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately a lot of them are, are, are parting from us, so all the more reason for us to focus on younger cohorts. And we're seeing that we're having a younger constituency on online, and not just online from a desktop perspective, but also mobile. Okay. So there will be a shift from not only the focus on digital on desktop, but there also is an ongoing shift to mobile to engage younger audiences, not necessarily for fundraising, mm -hmm. uh, but for them to be ad advocates and stewards on, on our behalf. So when they do have the discretionary income, they are in a position to make a donation. All right. Okay. And uh, my last question. Digital fundraising in the year 2016, what do you think? What's hot and what's new? I think what's hot is uh, social media advertising. Earlier in this segment, you raised a question, does banner ads work? And as that question comes about, as uh, ad blocking becomes more pervasive, not only in Europe but here in the States, marketers like myself have to get more creative to find ways to engage and to get uh, potential donors and advocates to click and to convert. And I think social media offers a solution in, in driving more cost efficiency in delivering uh, banner or if you want to call it native uh, forms of advertising. And one way social media, namely Facebook, can assist with that is by targeting through their custom audiences product or mm -hmm. ad tool, if you will. Mm -hmm. And through that, you're able to upload first party data, for example, email addresses, and you're able to target a portion of that data, that portion of that data that Facebook is able to match and say, hey, from that list of email addresses, these are the profiles on Facebook that we were able to match. Mm -hmm. And we can then create uh, either banner ads, we can create video advertising, we can create carousel ads and serve that population, our creative, and either get them to sign a petition, uh, send a donation, or just keep them engaged. And mm -hmm. I think that's where the industry is going. I think the short, I guess to, to make a very long story short, it's about science and really putting creative and a message in front of people, people who are interested, in front of people where you think the message is going to resonate. So we have to get a little bit more sophisticated with our targeting in 2016 to see success through digital advertising. All right. Thank you very much, Robert. It was great talking to you. Thanks for your Thank insights you. and uh, hope to see you one day offline, maybe. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, I'd love to meet you one day, Jan, and I appreciate you being flexible. I know it's late and it's dinner time there, so yeah. thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right, take care, Jan.